Hello, welcome to Math Solutions New Normal series. My name is Brandon, and I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about this paradigm that has shifted in education. We in the United States have found ourselves in a situation where the majority of students are being homeschooled. Caregivers, parents, grandparents, family members are taking care of and homeschooling kids, teaching them, and for the most part, this was probably never anything you expected to do. So I want to start by saying you're doing great. There is no one right way to do this. We're all in the same boat trying to figure it out as we go. So I have a couple of tips that might help you. Those of you who are already doing some of these things, great, kudos, we'd love to hear how they're working. Others of you, if you try some of these things out or if this in any way was helpful, please give us some feedback and let us know what you think. So first tip. Avoid worksheets if you can, especially when it comes to mathematics. The idea of worksheets is fairly antiquated. It is important for students to practice the algorithm, the procedures of mathematics, but there's far more gained from having a conversation. So I would like to propose that talking about mathematics is the new worksheet. Anytime you're thinking, what should I have my kid do? What should I be giving this child in order to have them practice. Worksheets can be a great way to do that. However, you're better off talking about math. Have them tell you what they did. Ask them questions. Ask them, why did you do that? How did you come to that solution? Explain that to me. In many cases, some of you may be thinking that this is new math that the kids are doing. And while it's not really new math, we have shifted the paradigm from when we were in school as students learning mathematics and that was more rote, more memorizing, more about doing those worksheets and, and completing those pages in the book. And now we've realized that students need more opportunities to discuss mathematics with another human, to talk about their reasoning, to work through things together, engage in a productive struggle. That's my first piece of advice. Number two, think about substance and quality over time. This new paradigm, the students being at home, children being at home and trying to take this idea of learning to the household can be tricky. And there's no way you're gonna spend just as much time with your student at home, with your child at home, with the kid you're working with, as they would in school. So think about that substance and quality over the amount of time. The next thing is, what, are, what about digital versus non-digital? In many instances, we have a lot of digital resources out there, but that's not the only, and that's not always the best way to learn. So consider both. Sometimes it's great to get in the kitchen, pull out those measuring cups, actually engage in that productive struggle in the real world and figure it out. Other times it might be more beneficial, based off of the schedule and what you have going on in your household, to have them working on a computer. So consider both. This remote learning doesn't have to always be digital. And my last piece of advice is think about giving choices. Um, this is something that teachers have been doing for a long time, especially when we have a situation where a student might struggle. We like to give them choices so that they have the ability to feel like they're in charge a little bit. Um, choices can be a wonderful way to help with buy-in as well. Getting them on board for doing that, spending that time that they need to to work on this content. So, one more time, I'd really like to hear from you, so if you could leave us a comment, let us know what you think, post something to social media, and remember, use the hashtag InspireMathCulture, as well as hashtag NewNormal. Thanks. Talk to you again soon.